Welcome to today's show on Roll with the Panthers. If you love what you do, y'all. And today, of course, we have someone that love what they do, a very special guest, Miss Peggy Scott Adams on the phone, chatting with the Panthers. And we're going to tell you a little bit about what's going on with Miss Scott. Is it Miss Scott or you prefer Miss Adams? Whatever, I'll answer to whatever, Miss <laughs> Well, how are you doing today? <laughs> I am wonderful. I am wonderful, and it's good to be with you. And it's good to have you on the show. And um, the first thing that I want to ask, that song, Bill, is that a true story? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the million-dollar question. That's right. <laughs> well, yeah. No, it's not a story for me. However, uh, uh, sweetheart, as I've traveled across the country when the bill first, uh, we released the bill back in 1997, I realized how many people, you know, uh, story I was telling, which was a little bit shocking to me, but as for myself, everything at my house during that particular time was okay. Okay. You know, but the problem is we never know what tomorrow's going to bring. But <laughs> right. Uh, no, I sang someone else's story. It was not a story for me. Uh, that's probably what everybody asked you because when I first heard the song years and years ago, uh, I didn't know who sung it. You know, I just heard it and I was like, wow, let me hear that again, you know. And the story is so realistic, you know, that's why I had to ask the question. I'm sure everybody asked you that question. They do, and, and I was as shocked as you when uh, my producer at the time, the late Jimmy Timmy Lewis, who wrote the song, when he presented it to me, you uh -huh. know, I thought that it was going to be your typical he dumped me for her. Uh -huh. And when I got to the line that says, the man I loved, loved another guy, I mean, I literally <laughs> called him, what? <laughs> I said, I'm not singing this. <laughs> no way I'm singing this. But after some consideration, and, and uh, I said, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead on it, and I'll do it, because uh, no one's going to play it anyway. No one will hear it, mm -hmm. and boy, mm -hmm. how wrong I was. But, you know, Miss Panther, once you get past, for me, once you get past, you know, breathing hard and rich, getting in the shock of the song, mm -hmm. uh, for me, I realized that in the end, the song is really, you know, it has a homosexual theme, but it's really about deception, being deceived, you mm -hmm. know? Right. Now, have, you ask me, have I uh, uh, experienced deception? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> we all have, you know, at one time or another, things right. turn out to be what we thought they were or uh, what we expected them to be. So I relate to the song from that point of view. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it, it's a very, very good story. You know, as you wait and hear, you know, the surprises that come along, you know, <laughs> to the end, it's a very good story. And um, it hit national charts. So it went viral. You know, it's all over the Internet. Bill, Bill, oh, yeah. Bill, you know. Yeah, we were number one for almost, almost four, a little better than four months on the Billboard charts, blues charts. They supposed to be charted on the pop charts, charts as well in uh, 1997. And it was just a... Bill just called the real phenomenon across this country. I right. You open the show, every talk show, every uh, print media was talking about Bill, so it kind of resurrected my career. Right, right. And uh, I see now you're doing gospel, or you have a couple of gospel uh, albums out right now? Yes, we are. What what it is, Miss Mather, is, is that after uh, the late Jimmy Lewis, like I said earlier, who was my producer and my and, and my, my dear friend, mm -hmm. who wanted so much, after he made the transition, and you know, and uh, a few weeks later, uh, my brother, who was my road manager and my best friend, and he passed, and uh, seven days later, it was my husband. Mm -hmm. So 2005 was a very traumatic year for me, time right. for me, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I had to just kind of, you know, search myself and decide, make some tough decisions as to which way I wanted to go with my life. I was married to a more efficient politician, and, you know, I had to make a decision for his business if I wanted to maintain a funeral home and which way I wanted to go. And during this time of just really researching myself and giving myself some time to uh, revamp uh, more or less, I had to define this divine uh, uh, experience where 
Spirit of God told me to start my own because there were so many record companies that were calling me to find out if I was interested in recording after Jimmy passed. And like I said, I was just in a, in a zone where I was trying to decide what I wanted to do, and it was during this time right. that I got this uh, spiritual uh, intervention, more or less, to start my own record label. And right. this is what I did. I started my own record label, Nora Records, which is named after my my dear mother. And um, so we decided to do, I came from a gospel background, sweetheart. My mom was a gospel promoter in Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't like I sit down and say, well, I want to do this gospel record. It was, uh, like I said, it was spiritually orchestrated. And uh, right. so uh, being obedient to what I felt like I knew, it was uh, confirmed that I, I had to do it. So we stuffed the uh, gospel CD back to the roots that we did, which is just uh, one of the uh, a powerful projects that I did, so anointed, uh, because, it, like I said, it was spiritually orchestrated, you know? So right. that's how that came about. So, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so proud of that project. Yeah, um, and I see uh, all over the Internet, of course, it... it has that paragraph that says the little lady with the big voice. <laughs> well, that started when I, uh, the Nazareth, when I was in high school, and because I was singing in clubs when I was like 15 years old, uh -huh. you know, and uh, one of the DJs in Pensacola, Florida, he gave me that type of the little lady because I was only five two and weighed maybe 90 pounds. <laughs> uh, but time is going about to change. Don't weigh 90 anymore. But, <laughs> but anyway, that's how we uh, came about that title. The little lady with the big voice, a job here in Pensacola, uh, uh, kind of gave me that title. And you, do, and you do have a big voice. You know, I was listening to uh, the duet you did with uh, JoJo Benson, uh, Lover's Holiday. Yes. And, I, I, yeah, and when you came in, it was just so powerful, you know. So, you know, I, I understand where the big voice come in, you know. <laughs> well, that was one of the things when I would do interviews back in the 60s. And I was with JoJo. And so, I mean, everybody was just... Uh, uh, pleasantly surprised to see this little lady, you know, <laughs> with this big and that was the first thing most of the interviewers would ask me, how much do you weigh? <laughs> you know? But that's a gift, it's a gift of God. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. you really have a nice, strong voice. You mean business. You so when much. you, when you sing it, you mean business. I was like, whoa. <laughs> well, you know, one thing, Miss Nathur, is just that journey. Uh, in the latter years, uh, when it came out with the Help Yourself CD, we released the Help Yourself CD, Jimmy was such a pro uh, prolific writer, and he wrote about reality, uh -huh. you know, uh, and I think that's why we were so successful, like I said, although Bill was not a personal story for me, but he, he dealt the reality, and it was a story about so many other people, and, right. and, and subsequently, all the other songs, you know, uh, was like that, and when I... When, you, when you're singing about real things, although it may not be personal, uh -huh. you know, then that's where the emotion people ask me, well, how can you sing a song like that if you have not gone through that experience? But uh, when, uh, as I said, you know, reality, when you're singing about reality, mm -hmm. it's easy for me to put the emotions there because, you know, uh, it's my, not my experience, but it's somebody's experience. So oh, yeah. That's where you get the, you know, and if I can't feel it, I'm not going to sing it. Because I firmly believe that if I don't feel it, there's no way you can feel it. You know? Right, right. And and you brought it there. I mean, uh, that's why I thought it was a true story. I mean, you took it there. The story was good and you sung it. You know, you did that. So, well, like I said. I had a hard time convincing a lot of people that it was not. <laughs> I had to uh, give you a quick story. I was in Louisiana and I had done a show and shared this with the audience that, you know, it wasn't a personal story for me. Uh -huh. uh, and at the end of the show, I was in my dressing room and I overheard these guys out in the hallway talking and they said, Dad, I don't care what she said. No way she could say that call like that or something. <laughs> so, I still couldn't convince something. Yeah. Oh, well, they'll, they'll get over it now, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I see where you've been uh, on Oprah, CNN, and all over the place uh, rolling. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we, I've had uh, been in this business since 40 plus years, you know, yeah. and uh, I've been blessed, I've been blessed. I, exactly. I, I don't regret one minute of it, you know, I'm just 
uh, one of those artists, you know, the thing is that where the music business came and found me, I didn't go looking for it, although uh-huh. I knew that, you know, that I had this thought given out, but my aspirations and dreams as a, as a teenager was to be a school teacher, you know, and right. like I said, uh, the music business came and found me, and uh, I uh, had a great career, I've been truly, truly blessed, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's been some downtime, but most of the time, downtime was because of, of my own choosing, you know, right. And I, I want to say that um, some of the pictures that I've seen of you um, is really, you have a very friendly personality about you, you know, just looking at the pictures, you know, you remind me of uh, Patti LaBelle when I see all the um, nice outfits and your personality. For some reason, it just takes me back to Patti LaBelle. Y'all have that same something about you, you know, and and... It just reminded me of that song, I Got a New Attitude, because I've seen you posing with, you know, uh, um, uh, I think it's like a big scar for something you had around your waist, and, and it just had that look like, hey, I got a new attitude type thing. <laughs> well, you know, that, uh, 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 that's generated uh, from a genuine love of people, and to mention uh, Patty, which I happen to be a big fan of, uh, uh-huh. but it comes, it's real, what you see is real because I have a genuine love for people and I've been, uh, had so much love and support over my, my musical career. Right. And so, you know, which raised me in, in, in touch with so many people across this country and across the world. And, uh, because of the fact that I genuinely love people, and what you see is what really is the real deal. Is what right. You know, and you can and tell. You can tell yeah. that well, without even. So yeah, you can and tell that without even knowing. You can just see. You're just one of the type of people where, you know, you just see a picture and you say, wow, you know, she's a good spirit person. She's friendly and she loves what she do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, and I'm a devout believer. I'm a Christian and stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the Bible says in order to, you know, to have friends, you must first show yourself to be friendly. And like I said, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to pretend, I don't have to force it right. from a natural place of right. having the love of people and caring right. about people. Exactly. Like what you send out most of the time is what you will receive. You know? Right. And that's the way I am. I'm, I'm real friendly with everybody. You know, I'm just day to day living life, having fun. And my motto on the show is I love what I do. So we support everybody that love what they do.